Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to um, Yahweh Bashem HaRoshai Bashem HaKadash and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Muslim and peace, blessing, and citation to the whole folklet. And um, yeah, I literally came across this article after finding another article and I thought, um, seems like a perfect um thing to go into because like it reads it says banks are re revisiting c19 lockdown plans as the looming energy crisis brings fears of winter blackouts and <laughs> it's crazy because i was talking about this yesterday <clears throat> and then um yeah man there's also this as you can see this is recent so hospitalized hospital hospitalizations they've risen by 20 percent and like it made mention the cases have risen too so i'm wondering if um is this is basically another lockdown coming and also these blackouts could they bring a lot down and then have these blackouts happen and then chaos just basically um or how breaking loose basically and it reads um some london banks are revisiting the C-119 lockdown plans to cope with the looming energy crisis this winter. And we can't forget these Rothschilds. They own, they own the banks along with the other banking families. They own the banks around the world. So it made me think, um, if they own the banks and the banks are talking about this, then not only that, but the earth was given to the hand of the wicked at Job 9 and 24. And the ones who own the bank are the wicked. Wouldn't they want chaos to come during the winter time? So it, it just made me think, man, all these things coming into my head, man. And it says, banks in the city of London have have been discussing how potential blackouts might affect their businesses, operations during regular talks. According to the trade body UK Finance, which coordinates the discussions. So why would they be thinking about these things? That's the question. Why are they thinking about these things? And it says some are turning back to emergency plans. And that's the, like, what's the reason? What do they know that we don't? They're, they're clearly preparing for something because they must know what's coming because they're the ones who are planning it. Well, not the people inside the bank, but yeah, the elites, they like to pass on the information and the information will be passed on down until it reaches the, the people in the bank. And then, yeah, man, they act accordingly to what these elites say, man. And like it says, some are turning back to emergency plans made during the C-19 plan. So I, I can't say that. Um, C-19, you know what it says. And considering measures such as using off-site locations, installing extra generators, or encouraging staff to work from home. And wouldn't a, a lockdown make sense for the for these things? And it says, um, where was I? But from home, the UK trade body confirmed to Insider. So yeah, man, this is this could be the beginning stages of the UK going back into a lockdown, man. Oh yeah, that just reminded me as well. I was literally telling my so-called friends in the world, man. When was it again? Um, I think it was like near the beginning of um hmm 
it was near February 2022. I was telling them that there's more lockdowns to come, man. I was telling them, man. And I know the law is going to do it. You, you can just see it, man. And like it makes mention. So, okay, let me continue reading before I lose track of what I'm doing. It says lenders, building societies and branch branch offers for intentional banks are all partaking in the talks according to the trade body. You see, what would be the need for all these banks talking to each other about these things? Unless, like I said, they knew something that we didn't. <laughs> this is Andrew, Andrew Rogan, Director of Operational Resilience at UK Finance told Bloomberg that all firms of all sizes were paying close attention to this potential for blackouts. And they're literally pointing it right in our faces, man. These blackouts are coming. These blackouts are coming. Just like the skits are saying, man. Yeah, and this is second address, 1511. But I will bring them with a mind in hand, talking about the children of Israel, basically starting with their let, and stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. And like it makes mention, that's basically Babylon or America, because like it made mention, and will destroy the land thereof. The land of Egypt um, over there in the east, um, that's still inhabited and the children of Israel were already brought out of the land of Egypt so this is talking about the spiritual Egypt known as the, the great city or Babylon like he mentions here Revelation 8 and it's lucky like Revelation 11 and 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom we, we all know why, and Egypt because it's known as Egypt because um like I may mention Exodus twenty and two um um Egypt is the house of bondage and this is where also our Lord was crucified and like it mentions in Job. 9 and 24, man. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the face of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So Esau's dominion is the entire earth. And, um, yeah, it, it talks about, um, let me see if I can find it. And um, yeah, this actually already happened, but it can be read again because Esau is in power again. Or shall I say, the pagan Roman Empire is back, basically, through the way of America. And it says, um, and, and I beheld on low, as it were, a roaring lion chased out of the wood. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle and said, here thou I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee, Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts, whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? So yeah, the end is to come through Esau Edom. <laughs> like I made mention, um, Esau is the end of the world, or the end of the age, and Jacob is the beginning of which followeth. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past, and had power over the world with great filthiness and over the whole compass of the earth which with much wicked oppression and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit and it says for the earth has thou not judged with truth and yet like it makes mention man that's that's Esau Edom that's literally Esau Edom like it makes mention with he had power over the, the whole 
So like yeah, he had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth. And the scriptures mention Job 9 and 24, how the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the pagan Roman Empire basically came back by way of America. So when the law says he's going to smite, smite them with the plagues of Egypt as before, is the same the same place that the Lord used in the time of the children of Israel dwelling in the land of Egypt over there in the east. The Lord's going to do it again in Esau's um, rulership. And we know that we know that one of the um plagues was the darkness. And you gotta think of it in um a modern in a modern way when you're reading the scriptures or when you're planning it to know. Cause it's it makes it 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 basically helps you to understand what the scriptures are saying. And like it says here, Exodus ten and twenty one, it says and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. And the Lord's bringing those, bringing that darkness again, man, by way of these blackouts. The Lord could have have it that, um, that these power stations, the water that they use to create energy, goes out, or basically stands still. Because um these nuclear power st these nuclear power plants or power stations, they need water to make the energy. And the scriptures talk about the fountains standing still. Yeah, second of six and twenty-four. It says at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell in. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. So yeah, imagine there's no running water. They won't be able to make electricity for the grid. And another way the law could bring a blackout is by an EMP as well, <clears throat> which will just literally shut off all electrical devices, or maybe the send out um, individual EMPs to to each city or maybe they'll just say or maybe they'll just turn off the power and say oh we're having technical problems but really they're not they're just lying and it says um there is no sense of panic he added just everyone is making sure that their their ducks are in a row and you see there is no sense of panic so basically saying there's no need to panic they're just making sure, just taking precautions. <laughs> Why would they take precautions against something that they have no idea that's going to happen? And knowing Esau, Esau is strategic. He will tell you um, at one point, oh, these things aren't going to happen. Don't worry about it. And then later on, or a few months down the line, the things he said, don't worry about. Now he's saying, oh, you can worry about it now because these things are here. So, yeah, man. They like to basically talk, talk like a serpent when speaking to the people. And when you see things like this, there's no there's no sense of panic here. They just everyone is making sure that their ducks are in, ducks are in a row. Firms are also still in South Africa, where power cuts have, have become part of a daily life, UK Finance told Bloomberg. And yeah, man, he knows they'll probably start off at, um, they'll probably start at turning off the power um, periodically, or maybe every, every few days, just to test it out and see how the people react before they completely turn it off. Um, where was there? Yeah, it says the UK, US and the EU have all been preparing for more common power blackouts. 
since energy supplies were squeezed by Russia in response to sanctions on Moscow after the country invaded Ukraine. And <laughs> to be honest, it's pretty obvious that this war over there in Ukraine is um, orchestrated or basically orchestrated by ESA or like a play or a show. And we know that ESA, those elites, have power over what these nations do, man. So, I guess the Lord's put it in Esau's mind to start bringing these blackouts now. And this is the perfect time. Because winter, it's a time of um, tribulation, man. Like, the, the cold alone, it, it's, it's bad enough. And like I makes mention, um, Matthew 24 and 20, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, leave on the Sabbath day. Because, yeah, man, the winter is, is, is pretty hard, man. Especially, like I've been saying, especially because of the the cold weather. And it gets pretty cold over here. Especially during the time of winter. And um, I'm sure there's another scripture about how the people would basically freeze in the winter I, I can't remember where it is but I was trying to find it I don't think I'm going to find it, man. But, yeah, I guess I'll just carry on. It says, um, the UK, the UK has drawn up plans for the possibility of organised blackouts for both industry and households this winter, per Bloomberg. And we know that ESO's lying about the power things. Oh, there's not enough energy in the clearly line. They're the ones who orchestrated the Russian troops to go over there. They just used um they're just using the war as a way to sneak things in, man. And pull the wool over people's eyes. Cause Esau's deceptive, man. That's that's his whole thing. Doesn't the scriptures say that um Esau was given basically the blessing of the sword and he's literally using deception as a weapon. It says earlier this month, Reuters reported that major banks in Europe were implementing energy cutting measures to cope with a limited gas supply to the continent. JP Morgan and other major banks reportedly turned off hot water and and fountains to cut down on energy use. And I guess that's the end of the article. Yeah, that's the end of the article. But yeah, man, um, these blackouts, like I was making mention, um, it can be used as a time of, of judgment because when these blackouts happen, people are more likely to start committing crime. And the reason why is because, like the Lord said, man, um, Ah, oh, so now I can't find it. There we go. Matthew 24 and 12. And this is why it's possible for people to commit crimes and do things they wouldn't normally do in the time of a winter blackout. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So yeah, man. 
<clears throat> people aren't going to care about each other like they used to. I remember when, I remember when um, the neighbours used to be so friendly. And soon that's going to be turning into your neighbours becoming your enemies, man. All because of um, the tribulation and because of the hardships. I'm making mentions in second address, man. And it's his second and just 15 and 19. And the man shall have no pity upon his neighbour. And let me look at that word pity. It says, um, the feeling of sorrow and compassion caused by the suffering and misfortune of others. So that's to have pity on someone. But the scriptures say they shall have no pity. So that's their heart turning cold, man. That's the heart waxing cold. And it says, um, a cause for regret or disappointment. But like the scriptures say, should they, have, they should have no pity upon their neighbour. So they're not going to have regret or be disappointed or be sh ashamed. Or even feel sorrow for the misfortunes of the person. They're not going to care. <laughs> they're not going to care, man. Like it says, man, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy the houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And that's another word I should look into. Great. Of an extent, amount or intensity considerably above average. So... <laughs> this the tribulation and the lack of food <clears throat> what should I say let me just focus on the tribulation because it says great tribulation but um so yeah the tribulation is going to be above the normal so above the average so people are going to be facing things that they've never ever faced before and to me that sounds like Jacob's trouble a time like never before man Let me get that. Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that, is none, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And yeah, that's talking about uh, the elect. The elect are going to be saved out of Jacob's trouble and preserved. In those times, like the scriptures mention, um, I already know where it is, man. It's in Second Address, chapter nine. Um, yeah, here we go. Second Address nine and seven it says, "And everyone that shall be saved." And shall be as able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. And that's the elect man, starting with the first fruits, the house, the house of David, and then the rest of the one third, which involves men, women, and children that believe, man. Like it says in verse seven. It says, you shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. <clears throat> so it's believing. And it says on verse 9, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. And yeah, that's all two first, man. They don't care about the law. <laughs> this is this is this is what they say. This is what they say when the prophets go to speak to them, or one of the members of the elect, or the hopeful elect, shall I say, go to speak to one of their family members about the truth. 
Um, This is Isaiah 39. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers or the prophets, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit, <laughs> and get you out of the way, turn aside, out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And you see, <clears throat> so let me carry on reading it says Where, wherefore thus save the holy one of israel because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant And I can read verse 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shred to take fire from the, the hearth or to take water with all out of the pit. So yeah, man. The two fairs don't want to hear the word. So going back to second address 9. So let me continue. Yeah, let me start at 11. It says, And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, I went as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain, and therefore being thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. And then answered I and said, I have said before and now do speak um, and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Like as a wave is great, greater than a drop. Like the measurement, um, the two thirds and the one third. That's 66. Yeah, that's 66.6% 6 of Israelites who are going to be destroyed. And then the one third, the 0.33%. <clears throat> and um I'm sure there's another one um and what was it again um see now I forgot what it's called ah oh, yeah let like the multitude perish that was born in vain Choose. Yeah, this is second address 9 and 22 it says I'll close out on this it says let the multitude perish then which was born in vain and let my grape be kept and my plant for with great labour have I made it perfect so there you go man the two first they gotta go why because the law said so <clears throat> but yeah man I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shemhal Shai and Shalom.